beautiful. Maybe we should just stop. There. <laughs> 396. Breathe on me. If you know it, feel free to sing along. I appreciate it. <laughs> sermon series part two over heaven I hit you guys with some pretty hard-hitting uh, scientific facts last week and if you were not here last week let me give you the scientific fact again because it's pretty intense you may want to write this down uh, this is the scientific fact one out of every one walking on the earth right now is going to die unless the rapture takes place so you will stand before God at one time or another and so you need to understand that right now. So that's pretty scientific. It's probably biblical and everywhere in between. And so we need to get that right out, the, out, out there right off the bat. Second thing is this. As death is inevitable, it's also inevitable to spend eternity somewhere. Right. You are going to spend eternity somewhere. And it's up to you to decide now before you get there as to where you're going to 
expenditure. And uh, and so as uh, with the other thing that we talked about last uh, last uh, uh, Sunday was when people when they die, everyone thinks that everybody is going to heaven. We talked about from scripture that that is not the case. And not everyone that dies, unfortunately, goes to heaven. And I know that we all have those things where we go up. Uh, and when somebody dies around you, and we, we say, well, so-and-so's in heaven, and so-and-so's in heaven, and so-and-so's in heaven. And even you could describe family members from years and years past to ones that's just died, you know. Uh, we don't know. God knows. But we do know, based upon what Matthew 7 speaks about, is the fruit of someone's life. And we'll talk about that a little bit later on as well. <laughs> but a place called heaven is something that we as Christians long for. Amen? Amen. So open up your Bibles with me, please, this morning to... We're going to start off at John, the 14th chapter. You see a place called heaven. As I, as I mentioned to you, you all last week... I'm gleaning from uh, two, the Bible, obviously, but two other sources. Uh, one's called uh, Heaven by Brother Randy Alcorn, and uh, another one is called A Place Called Heaven by Dr. Robert Jeffress, as I'm gleaning different information to be able to share with you all. And then everything we're going to be doing is going to be taken straight out of Scripture, as always. You see, heaven, is it a real place or not? Is it a state of being or an actual physical place? This morning, we're going to read from the Old Testament and the New Testament that's going to share with you and show you this morning where heaven is actually a physical place. Today, it seems like in our society, some believe that heaven is just a state of being. And so uh, I'm going to share with you from scriptures this morning to, to that there'll be no mistake whatsoever at the very end of the service through the scriptures taken directly from God's word that in fact heaven is a real physical place. Uh, it also has walls there, but that's another that's another issue for another time. Um, I thought as a conservative con congregation, you guys would might might appreciate that. It also says he's going to pay for those raw walls and it's going to be God. But anyways, <laughs> we, let me not jump into to God's walls just yet. Let's talk about this reality of heaven. As we read in God's word, John the 14th chapter, I, um, as I'm, I'm putting this together, I was looking at the, the Greek words for a couple of words here, and I'm going to share this with you as well as I'm reading uh, this particular passage in the New Revised Standard Version. John 14, 1, 2, and 3 says this, Let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house are many dwelling places, mansions, rooms, and we'll talk about that in a little while, so don't get caught up in the verbiage right now. No need to correct me when I'm preaching. <laughs> bless you. you just bless you. That was that was an amen right there. Anybody else need to get anything out real quick? <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. As we are, I think God's word. Let not your heart be troubled. Believe in God. Also believe in me. In my Father's house are many dwelling places. If it are not so, I would have told you. For I go to prepare a place for you. And if I, Jesus is speaking, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself, that where I am, you may be also. Let's break this down this morning. The Greek word, and I typically don't do this, but I think it's very special on this. Uh, the word place here used in scripture uh, in the uh, second second verse here of John 14. The word place is, the Greek word for this is tapos. T-O-P-O-S. Tapos. And tapos is used three times here in uh, John the 14th chapter. Uh, and it refers to this. Uh, tapos is a Greek word in which we get our word topography out of. 
Topos is actually, it's a, it means this. It means it's a, it's a place. Uh, in scriptures is known as a place or a, a region or uh, topos could be a house or a, 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 a room, if you will, throughout scripture. So that's what the Greek word for topos is. It's a physical place. Next here, I want to, 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 to understand this. You would understand this as well. The same thing in verse 2 is uh, the word dwelling, the word rooms, the word mansions. The, 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 the Greek word for that mean is mone, monai, which means dwelling, which means lodging, which means a, 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 a habitat. So putting this in, in, in perspective in the Greek here, when you take a look is, is, is Jesus says that in my father's house, there's many rooms that he went to prepare a place. I think that you, when you look at these, especially going back to all the way through the Greek manuscripts, we see that this is describing something real, something physical, right. not something just spiritual that some happenstance out there. This is a physical place that Jesus is talking about. Again, John 14, 2, in my father's house are many mansions, places, dwelling places, rooms. If we're not so, I, I would told you, eh, I'm going to go and prepare a place for you. Now, Flip over them, please, to Acts, the first chapter. Let's see about this, because we're going to see about how, how you know, some folks will say, well, okay, well, I, I understand that, uh, that Brother Jimmy, you say that the, in the Greek manuscripts here, it, it refers to a physical place. So how can I be sure it, it, that, that, in fact, that, that this heaven is a physical place? Well, I'm going to explain to you here from Scripture about how the physical leaves this earth and goes to a physical place. As we read in Scripture in Acts, the first chapter, uh, verses 9 through 11, says this, He, being Jesus, was lifted up while they, the disciples, were looking on, and a cloud received Him out of their sight, and they were gazing intently into the sky while He was departing. Behold, two men in white Clothing stood beside him. White robes stood beside him. And in verse 11, and they said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand here looking into the sky? Jesus said, the, This Jesus that had been taken up from you into heaven will come just the same way as you have watched him up, go up into heaven. Now, uh, let's put this in kind of pers perspective a little bit this morning. If you, uh, if you were sitting on there, this is taking place on the, the Mount of Olives. It's a physical place just outside of Jerusalem. It's land. They were on land. They were the, the, the apostles were there on land. They were seeing Jesus standing there on the land physically. There was, everything was physical uh, about this. There was no out-of-body experience. There was no, they were physically there standing. They were physically there seeing Jesus. And they physically saw Jesus' physical body get raised up into heaven. Now, It'd be kind of absurd for us this morning to say, well, what they meant to say was that Jesus was ascending to some uh, metaphysical, uh, you know, some kind of this uh, spiritual, some kind of uh, uh, place that it's a state of being. Nobody goes from a physical place to a state of being. And that's illogical. And so for us this morning, as we read this in Scripture, that, that they were looking at him on the Mount of Olives. They were physically looking at him, and he physically got lifted up. And the men in the white robes there said, what? said, when you're looking up at Jesus, don't you understand that he's going to be coming back? He's going to be coming back, and that's going to be clues for us to what we're going to get to a little bit later on in the sermon. Uh, but when he is going to be coming back, so he physically ascended, he will physically come back. This is not some just a state of being. This is a physical thing that we are reading here in scripture. In scripture. 
Now, this place that Jesus is going to, we're going to talk about that a little while, but, but it's this place that we're going to, the place that, that it says here in Scripture that, that is called heaven. And, and as you see him going into heaven, as in Acts 1, uh, 11 says, this physical place, how do you get there? Well, I'm glad you asked. Because John 14, 6 says this, I am the way, the truth and the life. And no man, nobody, and no means no, nobody gets to God the Father. Nobody goes to heaven. Nobody goes to, to heaven but through Jesus Christ. Amen. And so how do you get there? Is it a physical place? Absolutely. How do you get there? You get there by going through Jesus Christ, the Son of God. How do you do that? By accepting Him as your Savior, by, by living your life for Christ and, and living your life day to day and letting your fruits be known to God that you in fact are a Christian, not just in words only, but also in deeds. Now, works does not save you. Don't let that bit trip you up a little bit there. But if you are saved, you're going to act like it. If you're saved, your deeds are going to match your, 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 your talk. Your talk's going to match your walk and vice versa, ladies and gentlemen. And so how are you saved? You're saved by the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. Now, this present heaven. We see here in Scripture, which we read here in, in Acts, we see that it is up. Now, it's up. Now, this place that is up right now, this heaven that is up, is that going to be the permanent heaven? Is it a temporal thing? Is it a, it's just a, a, something that's taking place right now? We are going to study this out to see exactly the place that God is at right now. Heaven, is that a temporal place? Is it a permanent place? Let's read in scripture and see. You see, ladies and gentlemen, we need to understand that there is a difference between the current heaven and the permanent heaven. Yes. And I know some of you guys are looking at, looking at me like, what in the world are you talking about? I'm glad you have that. I really am. Stick with me here. We're going to read through scripture and you'll understand for yourself exactly that there is a difference between the present heaven and the future heaven that is yet to come. It's important for us to understand now where our loved ones are at right now. Where's our loved ones at that has passed away, that is that are believers in Christ? Where are they at right now? Well, we're going to, to answer that in Scripture. And yes, there is a difference between the present heaven and the future heaven. The present heaven. Let's read in Scripture as we see about and read about the present heaven. And we, we see here the present heaven and the future heaven. There are differences. Ladies and gentlemen, the Bible talks about these. There, uh, there's various heavens. As a matter of fact, as in Scripture, it talks about the various heavens that they are, are presently right now. Heaven 1, 2, and 3, and eventually the new heaven and new earth, which I would submit to you could be even looked at as being the fourth, but that'd be the final one. Now, let's read this in, in various places in Scripture here as we, we take a look at this. But the first, the first heaven that, that we read, and we can take a look at things from, from, from Genesis all the way to Revelation, Revelation that, that the, the first heaven, if you will, is the earth's atmosphere. It's where the, 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 the clouds are. It's where the birds fly. It's where jetliners jet set across the sky. That is the first heaven that Bible, the Bible talks about. The second heaven that the Bible talks about is basically like outer space. It's the, the galaxies, the nebulas, the stars. That is the second heaven that the Bible talks about. The third heaven that the Bible talks about is Jesus Christ calls it paradise. This is the abode of God. It's the presence of God. It's where Christians go to whenever they pass away upon this earth right now. It is where, it is where, 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 where Paul talks about here. It's a, John also speaks of, of this. But you see here in 2 Corinthians, the 5th chapter, verse 8 says, In fact, we are confident that we would prefer to be away from the body and in the presence or in home with the Lord. 
you as a believer of Christ, whenever you die here, you don't go to the first heaven because you can see that. You can't go to the, you can't, you don't go to the second heaven. Uh, you can see parts of that. God can see all of it, but you go to the third heaven, if you will. It's where, where John was called up to the third heaven. You go to, to a, a, a place where God is living at right now, and it's called paradise. It's a, it's a temporal heaven, if you will. It's not the permanent place. I know some of you guys are scratching your heads. Hang with me. This is biblical. You see, ladies and gentlemen, the present heaven is where God is at right now. There will be a future heaven, though, and let me explain. Let's go to the future heaven. Let's talk about that. You see, let me just give you just a, 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 just a basic, this would be a Reader's Digest version of prophecy, all right? And so we, got, we need to talk about from where we're at right now to the present heaven and to the future heaven that's going to be. So let's, let's get there. This is, we'll try to do this in about two or three minutes. So, yeah, there's a good laugh over there, yeah. I'm going to try, Mary Grace. So, the, the, so right now upon this earth as we are living, uh, the, the end of the church age is going to take place and something called the tribulation will take place. At the tribulation, when the tribulation takes place, that we as believers, the dead in Christ, the, the, the dead in Christ, the bodies that are here, their souls are already with God. I'm going to talk about this later on, about where people uh, are, are, are at with God. But their souls are with God, but their bodies are going to be caught up to, uh, to, 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 to God in, in, in the air, right? Whenever Christ comes back. This is not necessarily the second coming because Christ does not stamp upon the earth. He's in the air. And so what takes place is that the, the dead in Christ will rise and those that are, that are believers of Christ, if we're still alive when that happens, and look at the news around you, boy, it looks like it's going to be happening pretty soon. So the, the, dead, the, the, the dead in Christ arose and you and I as believers, if we're still upon this earth, then we'll be called out. We'll be snatched up in a twinkling eye. We'll be gone. And then when, that, when we are gone, we were with... Uh, the, the, the temporal heaven, if you will, we'll be in paradise where God and where God's at right now. And a little bit later on in the sermon series, I'm going to tell you and explain to you all about that. But as that works out here, whenever those that are believers in Christ have been raptured out, God's judgment is poured out upon this earth for seven years. And you and I don't want to be here for that. Not at all. First, the seven years is broken out into a three and a half year period in the beginning, three and a half year period at the end. We'll talk about that in another sermon some other time. But at the end of that period, at the end of the tribulation period, oh, what takes place then, ladies and gentlemen, is after God's church uh, poured out his, his, uh, his judgment upon the earth then, then what happens is, is something called the thousand year millennium. And that's where Christ, where God and the believers come back to this earth. Now, this earth is not going to be the, 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 the final destination. It's going to be a, a temporal uh, place, if you will. It's, it's going to be like the earth now, but it's kind of like being renovated, if you will. All right. It's going to be a little bit better than it is now, but it's, but it's still going to be this earth that we come back upon the, the very first time. And so, so as God comes back here to, to rule and reign, and we will be walking with, with God upon the this earth and ruling and reigning with him and, and, and this earth that keep in mind wherever God's at is where heaven is just doing semantics there right but back upon this earth when we come here with God it's not going to be the finished final project it's kind of like a, going to be a uh, uh, like the fixer upper phase if you will that's kind of a quick way that, to say that right and so it's it's like it's like if you bought a a, a vacation home and you're and God's working on that vacation home and you would be in a camp trailer uh, that's a, or a nice apartment or whatever next to it as God is going to be working on this later on and we'll talk about that all right so anyway so as we back up on this earth for a thousand years what takes place at the end of that thousand years something called the great white throne of judgment this is intense. This is not for believers. This is for unbelievers. And the unbelievers, well, what they do is they will stand before God. And, and those that are in, the, the, in, in the, the, the abyss now, those that are in Hades now, those that, that, that will stand before, they will be raised and they will stand before God. 
This great white throne of judgment. Those that, that are, that, that would, as God is going through there, and this is intense, guys, as, as what's taking place is, 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 is the, as God is looking through called something called the Lamb's Book of Life. And when God is in the Lamb's Book of Life, He's looking for names. And all those names that are not found in the Lamb's Book of Life, it says there in Scripture that, that they're thrown in the lake of fire. I wish I could tell you something different, uh, but I'd be lying to you and I'd be blaspheming God. Uh, I'm just telling you what exactly what God's Word says. And so as they get thrown down into the lake of fire, God then casts the evil one, devil, the devil into the, the lake of fire and seals that up and you'll never see or hear from him ever again. And then scripture says that there'll be a new Jerusalem. And we'll get to that a little bit later on. A new city, a new Jerusalem that comes back. And before that takes place is that this earth, the present earth, the present heaven is going to be burned up. It's going to be, God's going to burn this place up. And, and as it's burned up, we, we, it will not be anymore. But the new Jerusalem, the new earth. Uh, the new heaven will come back and, and take its place. And that's where we, as believers in Christ, will also be in the presence of God the Father. Amen. We're gonna, I'm going to explain all that stuff in Scripture as we get to there. Uh, but that is just a real, little quick reading of this version. It took a little bit longer than three minutes. Mary Grace, you were right. But uh, uh, that is the, the future, where we're going here. Revelation is the 21st chapter. If you'll flip over with me, please, to there. We're going to see what John says about this. Everything that I was just telling you, John speaks about it ever so clearly. That's where I got it at from Scripture. Uh, Revelation is the 21st chapter. John says this. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, and the first heaven and the first earth had passed away. And the sea was no more. And I also saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared like a bride adorned for her husband. Can you imagine? I, I, remember, I remember back 25 years ago when I was standing at the altar and I was standing in front of a church at the altar and I remember seeing the doors open and my beautiful bride dressed for the very first time in her dress and her wedding gown and as she started to walk down the aisle I began to cry because I was overcome with emotions can you imagine can you imagine what we're seeing here? That, 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 that God is building something so special. That Jesus right now is building something so special for us. It's like, it's, it's like seeing your bride. It's, it's, it's coming down and it's going to be magnificent. I thought that seeing my wife was special. But this is going to be even far greater than that. That's exciting. That's exciting times. As we read here in Scripture, that, that's pretty amazing what, you know, God right now, that's what He's doing right now, is building this. You see, let's read about the characteristics of the future heaven. It's going to be new. It says in Scripture here, John says that, And I saw a new heaven and a new earth, because the first heaven and earth, they passed away. You see here when we read in Scripture between Revelation to 20th chapter and, and Revelation to 21st chapter and that, that little space there, you're going to see that the old earth and the old heaven, if you will, has burned up. It's passed away. It's not there anymore. But what we see here in Revelation 21 is the new heaven, the new earth that God has been preparing for us come down. That's a praise. Amen? Amen. Flip over with me, please, to 2 Peter, the third chapter. It's a short flip. 2 Peter, the, the third chapter. Let's read what takes place here during this time. 2 Peter, the third chapter, down at verse 7. It says this, But the present heavens and earth by His word are being reserved for fire, kept for the day of judgment and destruction of ungodly men. Skip down to verse 10. 
But the, but the day of the Lord will come like a thief in which heavens will pass away with a roar and the elements will be destroyed with intense heat and the earth and its works will be burned up. Verse 12, since all these things are to, are to be destroyed in this way, what sort of people ought to you be in, a holy, uh, in, a, in holy conduct and godliness, looking for and hastening the coming day of God, on account of which heavens will be destroyed by burning, and the elements will melt with intense heat? Verse 13, but according to his promise, we are looking for a new heaven and a new earth in which righteousness dwells. Amen. Amen. Men. Now, some people, when they when when they read this here, and some people they 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 they, they misinterpret this here. Is is it, let's don't misinterpret this. You see, some people say, well, this is nuclear weapons and those kind of things, and so this all this heat and that kind of stuff is like nuclear weapons. Well, the problem with that is it's about a thousand years too late. You see what I'm saying here? Uh, is, is that that's the end, the end place at the end of the millennium, and so uh, so everything else like that is is, is is passed away. So 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 this is not this is God's making a new heaven and a new earth. Now why then? You know the question arises: uh, Why? Why do we need a new heaven? Can't He just put a paint job on what we got? I mean, it works for my old pickup truck. Can it not? You know why? Something. There's a word here has three letters in it. It starts with an S and it ends with an N. I'll spot you those. Sin. You see, sin has crept upon this earth. Sin has overcome this earth. And God can not allow sin to live with Him. Also, why do we need a new body? Because sin has crept into our bodies as well. Uh, disease, strife, turmoil, that will be no longer with God. He's going to wipe away every tear from your eye. Ladies and gentlemen, that's the reason why a new body and a new heaven and a new earth. Because what God has done for you and I. He originally intended for us to walk with no sin. But, but praise God, he knew even before the foundations of the earth that you and I were going to mess up. And he, praise God, made a way for us to atone for that messing up. Amen. It's called Jesus Christ. Amen. And so because of that, ladies and gentlemen, we can't do it alone. We are uh, imperfect people. And so what must we do? We must rely upon Jesus Christ so that one day, one day when we're clothed with the righteousness that God gives us through the blood of Christ, that one day we can stand before God the Father. One day He will welcome us, welcome us into His kingdom. One day that we will be able to live with Him in paradise. So one day we'll be able to live with Him upon the earth and eventually the new heaven and the new earth all because of what He did for you and I. That's great news. Mm -hmm. That's great news. Our loved ones will be there. If they're, if they're believers in Christ Jesus, they will be there. If they're not believers in Christ Jesus, they will not. So it's important for us to go out and to tell because we want everybody to be there. We want God to be able to choose everybody to, to speak out and call everybody. We must pray for them and pray pray that God would, would call them and that they would hear that call. But you and I must do our part. We can't just simply come to church and do our churchly deal, the doings and just be churchly people inside these four walls and go out and not speak of Christ anymore until we come back to these four walls. That's not taking the church to the world. That's not biblical. That's not following the Great Commission of Matthew 28. We are to go outside of the church and spread the gospel of Christ. Because one day we're all going to be standing before God the Father. And I pray that you will stand before God the Father as a child of God, not at the great white throne of judgment. But it's your choice. And praise God, got great news. You can make that choice today. Amen. Make that choice today. You never know when this, your, the, your last day upon this earth is going to be. You never know that. 
But you do know this, that Jesus Christ is the way to God the Father. We read that in John 14, 6. He's the way, the truth, the life. Nobody comes to, to, to God but through Christ. You need to put your life in the hands of Christ. Amen. This morning, let's stand. If you're here this morning and you've never placed your life in the hands of Christ, then I pray this morning you will come down front and you make that public profession and you say, Lord, I want to give you my life. If you're here this morning in all seriousness, nobody moving around, everybody concentrating on what God is speaking to us. I'm going to ask you this morning right now. If you need to rededicate your life, you need to, to say, Lord, I, I need to hit that reset button because I have not been doing what I need to be doing. Praise God that God is saying God is here. You come. You may need to come down to the altar and just pray. Talk to God about whatever God has placed upon your heart. Maybe you need to serve God, our risen Savior here at Bethel. As God is talking, you be respectful to God. God is speaking. You come right now as we sing.